Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. We're going to go over something quite cool today. Uh, it is an updated formula based on an old video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, the link to the old video if you want to watch that one uh, at some point uh, post this. But but really what I'm uh, what I want to show is an updated formula. So uh, I got some feedback from some people uh, and I, I read the comments and I realized wow there's actually a better way to do this uh, to solve this scenario. And so I spent a bit of time working out a more optimized formula and one that actually works under a number of different conditions. What the issue was, when we are handling multiple currencies, uh, I'm not gonna go over how we had to shape the data model and behind the scenes. Um, you can watch the old video for that. Today, I just wanna sh show you the new formula that I've created, which actually works under way more conditions than this one actually did. So in the first one, we, we had a bit of a problem that I, that I, to be honest, didn't actually identify early enough. The problem was that uh, this looks good. This form, this this result looks good, right? And this will actually, I'm sure this will happen to you sometimes as well. And you've got to, um, and sometimes they just maybe audit what's going on a bit, uh, a bit closer. Uh, and um, you know, I I didn't actually do it in that case. But a perfect example of where you run into an issue and you've actually got to find a better solution. Now this. It's not being not saying that this solution is not uh, did not would not work under some conditions, but uh, as always happens with data, it's not perfect, and you need to work uh, out a better solution. Now, the problem that we had here was that, um, and you can't identify it just by looking at this part of the table. But what happened was, uh, in this formula, in this formula, we were uh, searching through, we were, we were adjusting the uh, total revenue for every single sale for the actual. Uh, home country amount. Um, so the total revenue was always in a foreign amount, and we needed we needed to go and find the uh, the exchange rate on a particular historic day for uh, that particular sale, so that we could actually say, well, at that time that sale was actually uh, valued at X in our home currency. And so this formula works. Uh, it looks good. It looks good because what it does is it goes and looks up the particular date that a sale was on and the particular currency of that sale and then we divide that, um, that that actual revenue number by that exchange rate. Now the problem came in right where there was no actual currency exchange rate on a particular day and it wasn't identifiable here because the if I looked at historic data it, it looked like there was currency amounts or currency rates on every single day and so everything looked good. But check out what happens when you switch this around. When we switch these around, there's actually missing days on the weekend and that was actually stuffing up the results. And so that's not good, obviously, because this is going to not, this, even one of these is gonna ruin the actual total number, right? So we can't have that. And so we needed to, well, I, I needed to work out a solution as to how to fill in these gaps, how to how to dynamically fill in these gaps, because we made sales on the weekend, right? So we needed to, if 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 we were to do something like this, then we needed to somehow create a number which uh, then um, sat on a particular weekend. And what I thought was, well, we've really got to drag Friday's number because currencies don't trade on the weekend. So we needed to drag Friday's number across the weekend. Uh, so that then if there was a weekend sale, we could say, okay, well, that was actually um, that was actually at that exchange rate. So it wasn't, it's not, it's not, not, not super easy, but it introduces a really cool function called um, last non-blank. So what I'll do is I'll show you one that actually works. Uh, so if I jump to my page here, actually I'll duplicate, I'll duplicate this page, we'll duplicate it, and I'll bring in my total currencies updated here. And as you see, it's, it looks much better. But looks much better. And I'm also going to bring in my exchange rate normalized here. So what what we have done, right? What we have done is uh, I have been able to. I've created a formula. I've created a formula which. So this is the just the, this is the exchange rate from the table. But this is the formula which then extends out Friday for uh, for the weekend. So we've got on Friday, um, which is not for the for the for the Kiwi Aussie, it was ninety five twenty one, and I've extended that over to the weekend. So we've achieved what we needed to achieve. Now let's have a look at the formula. So 
Uh, first of all, we I've, I've used a this is this is really uh, you know, somewhat of a pattern that you could actually reuse if you wanted to download um, this resource, which you can. It's uh, if you just just link uh, check out the link down in the description to Enterprise DNA TV resources, and you can find it there along with a whole bunch of other resources. It's up to about fifty now uh, that are associated to YouTube videos. So so uh, so please check it out. But what we've done here. Is we have let's 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 not um, let's not have a look at this one just just yet. We have we are calculating the exchange rate, but we want to calculate the last exchange rate in a revised table. So what I've done with this table is I've said, okay, well let's have a look at just the on any particular day. Let's look back three days and then go and grab the last exchange rate uh, that uh, that exists in that in that th in that three days, right? And that's essentially essentially what it's doing here. It looks very, very, uh, very simple, right? But all the hard work is basically done in here. And we've said last non blank has a lot of nuances to it. Um, so I, unfortunately, we can't go into them in just this video. Maybe in a future video we will. But uh, it is a really, really powerful formula when used well, especially in Calculate. But essentially, all this is doing is it is uh, revising a table so that we can then go and grab the the last non blank, so the last result in the table. And uh, and implement it, and so it allows us to drag across this um, this exchange rate that happens on a Friday over Saturday and Sunday, and then what we can do is we can integrate this exchange rate. Obviously, we can integrate this exchange rate now instead of using just the straight exchange rate, which had no results. We can use this one, which produces the correct results midweek, but then also a, a result in the weekend. We can then integrate this into our. We can simplify our formula immensely here, so we can actually go so. Some um, which iterates through the sales table, and then for every single uh, revenue number, we then go and find the, ex the normalized exchange rate, and then that is what produces a result for every single um, every single day here. And we can drill into a specific time period. We can also drill into a specific um, we can drill into a specific uh, currency. Which uh, needs to be uh, this needs to be improved somewhat because uh, that infinity, sorry, is um, is is because this actually needs to be this needs to be done at a different um, this needs to be a different filter. So what I've done is I've got created this filter here, and then this would actually then drill that down. So all that was doing was um, the it wasn't registering what was correct in the data the data model there, and so. Uh, I just had to make a few few small adjustments, and now we can uh, create a slicer from our foreign currency table instead, and that will actually change the um, uh, change the context of the calculation, so those other ones don't actually appear. But pretty cool technique, right? Pretty cool technique. Now there's a little bit there. There's a little bit there. There's a little bit to understand, um, but check check out how efficient. Check out how efficiently you can calculate that now, um, and also make it you know a dynamic calculation. Um, by utilizing um, especially DAX and, and and combinations of all all of these patterns. So, as as I said, you can actually um, you can download this resource if you jump into the Enterprise DNA TV resources. You can download this along with a range of other re resources if you decide to, um, to de decide to invest in that. Um, but um, but obviously you got you would you know you benefit from not only the ones that exist there now but you would have, you would be able to benefit from all the different videos that uh, I intend to put out in time uh, with Power BI as well. You once you have access to it, uh, you have access to it for uh, for 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 life. So also don't don't forget to subscribe. Um, new re fresh Power BI videos every weekday. Uh, we're going to be diving into to lots of um, beginner stuff, intermediate stuff, advanced stuff. Uh, we're going to cover the whole spectrum of how you can really power up your analysis inside of Power BI. So don't forget to subscribe uh, and uh, look forward to um, speaking to you in the next video.